pay for selling him the first rubber bullet. So I'm grocery shopping today. I'm at the supermarket and sometimes I see crazy barbecue related things and I like to share them with you. This is not at all serious. I'm not, I don't even know how these are gonna be, but I thought I would buy them and try them and let you know how they turn out. And maybe you've seen them before. Maybe I'm the last one who knows these things exist. Maybe they've been around for a long time. I don't know. But I go to the grocery store and in the uh, freezer section, I see they have a whole bunch of Swift uh, spare ribs, trim St. Louis style in the Cravac. That's no big deal. Uh, those are a dime a dozen. But I see this. Let me turn the camera around. I see this. It's Swift brand Kansas City style barbecue, pre-seasoned, pre-rubbed, St. Louis style spare ribs in a bag. And that's not even a big deal either because you see that at Costco, but it says right here, it says cook in the bag. What the what? So I've never seen this before. Cook them in the plastic bag. How, how good could that possibly be, right? That's what I'm thinking to myself. And that's really why I bought them. How good, how good could they be? And here you can see the, the price. They're $3.99 a pound, $16 for the slab of ribs. I bought these at Rayleigh's, uh, actually Knob Hill, which is the uh, Bay Area version of Rayleigh's out of the Sacramento area. And the instructions say to simply, you can cook them thawed or you can cook them frozen as is, 400 degrees in the oven. Rib does not need to be thawed prior to cooking. Cooking time is the same either way. It's hard to imagine how that is. Don't microwave them. Place the bag on top. Place the bag top side up on a baking sheet that matches the length of the entire bag. Cut a small half inch opening in the top to vent it. And then it says to, kind of hard to see this here, bake it on the sheet with the rib bag on the center rack of the oven. Bake for one hour, 20 minutes. During cooking, bag will balloon. Add five minutes to total cooking time for each additional rib bag you cook. Cook until Thickest part of the rib reaches an internal temperature of 190 degrees Fahrenheit. Carefully remove the bag from the oven. Let the ribs rest for 10 minutes. Open the bag, serve, and enjoy. So they can also be grilled. There's grilling instructions here, and I'm not going to really bother with that because the whole point of this, I mean, you got to remove the ribs from the bag to do that. The whole point of this is you cook them in the bag in the oven. I mean, that's a crazy notion to me. Uh, and I can't imagine how they're going to be any good, but I am going to try to see if they are any good, and I'll let you know what I think. Okay, so I've got these on a cookie sheet. They really don't fit on a cookie sheet. They're so long, but I'm going to think that's the best I can do. And I've made a small half-inch cut right up here, and I assume that the, the curved part of the rib, or the, the, the meat side of the rib, is what they mean by the top side of the package. So... This is gonna go into my 400 degree oven when it comes up to temperature. And uh, I'll bake them off and let you know how they turn out. And by the way, a comment about my Whole Foods reusable shopping bags. Nothing wrong with shopping Whole Foods if you can afford it, but it's awfully expensive. They make a great reusable shopping bag, which is what I take everywhere, but I don't shop there very much. And I bought these ribs, as I said, at Knob Hill, which is an affiliate of the Rayleigh's supermarket chain out of Sacramento, California. Okay, in the oven, middle rack, uh, had to position the bag a little bit differently so that I didn't hit the wall or the back of the rack there, but I think I've got it in here okay. And we are now at 400 degrees, and we'll let this go for one hour and 20 minutes. We'll be back then. All right, so it's been an hour and 20 minutes. Let's open this up for the first time and see how this bag looks. It is getting steamed over. It's a little it's a little bit expanded and puffy there on the top, but not super puffed up like a balloon. Let me pull it out and I'll take a temperature measurement to see what's going on with the meat. So interestingly enough, I will point out the fact that the bag actually popped open on the end, which I don't. Think it's supposed to do and I mentioned I did cut the requisite half inch hole in the top but apparently that was not enough to handle the pressure inside the bag. 
So let's see if I can get a reading through the bag here. Um, 211, let me, let me back this out a little bit. 208, 205, all the way through. I'm, I'm in the meat, not in the bone, I can tell. It looks like I'm definitely over the 190 they recommend. So I'm gonna say these are done. After an hour and 20 or 40 minutes, I'm gonna let them sit for just a bit to cool down to be able to handle them. And then we'll take them out, take a look, and we'll see how they taste. 10 minutes have passed. Let me get gloved up here so I can handle these ribs without burning myself. I don't know how hot they're gonna be after 10 minutes, but I'm gonna do my cotton glove with nitrile glove overlay, which is a great way to handle pork if it's hot without messing up your cotton gloves and without burning yourself. Okay, there we go. So here's the ribs in the bag. I'm gonna transfer it. I think what I'll do actually is I will just cut it over the pan. I can see there's quite a bit of liquid in here. You know, I showed you the, uh, the, the burst end of the bag, which is down here. Good news is that this did not spew liquid out into my oven, so that could be a real problem because this bag did extend over the edges, but I don't know how to avoid this except maybe you might want to make more, more slits in the bag than they talk about, other than just the one. I'm just going to cut this open. See if I can lift this out of here. Now, you know, what does the kitchen smell like? The kitchen smells like cooked meat, but I don't know what kind of meat it is. It doesn't really smell like uh, barbecue pork. It doesn't smell objectionable, but it's kind of hard to say what it is, to be honest with you. Maybe that's the seasonings, the spices and stuff. This is pretty hot. <laughs> so here it comes out of the bag. If I let it go right there, it's kind of sticking to the bottom side. There we go. There we go. So there's a slab of ribs. You can see that the, uh, the meat is pulled back from the bones like you'd sort of expect. <laughs> there's kind of a burned spot here on the top. This is just probably some kind of, I don't want to say blood, but maybe some sort of juice that oozed out, created kind of a splotch right here, which is not super attractive, but it comes right off. These ribs have, you know, they're, I can see they're going to be tender enough. They're wanting to crack here in the middle. The color is decent. You know, I'm actually surprised that the color is what it is, to be honest with you. Um, you know, could you improve this by putting this on the grill at this point? Maybe getting some more browning? Maybe, but there's actually a bit of browning on here already. I don't know that you need it more. This over here is a little bit dry in this end. And it's a little bit more moist down here, which I think is kind of the fattier part of the rib. So I'm gonna just cut out one of these ribs and give it a taste and see what I think. Meat is pretty firm. I didn't get the pot. there we go. Meat is pretty firm. It is uh, no, no smoke ring, obviously. <laughs> and yeah, I don't know. Let's let's see how it let's see how it tastes. Mmm. No. It's a rib. I don't get a small. Excuse me. I don't get a strong flavor from the rub. I get a little bit, but there's not a whole lot really to the rub. I guess I shouldn't say that. I do taste it, but I would normally have some kind of sauce on here. The meat is, um, the meat is moist, but it's really lacking in terms of seasoning, in terms of, there's no smoke, obviously. 
And there's a lot of jus in the bag. I'm just gonna see, if that's actually a lot of fat, I suppose, not just jus. Dip it in there, see what that tastes like. Uh, that didn't really improve it very much. Bone pulled right out. It's funny how they're a little bit overdone in some ways, and yet the meat up here at the top of the rib is really not that tender. It's got a bit of a crunch to it. So it's, it's an uneven cook for sure. So I'm just gonna hit this with a little bit of Casey Masterpiece barbecue sauce, nothing special. This is what the average Joe would probably do at home. That already looks a little better. And maybe I'll just put the excess on the side here to the extent that I can. And let me cut this one off and see how it turns out. And I've lost the cotton gloves at this point because I had to handle the camera. So there's a, there's a sauce rib, looks a little more attractive there. Still gray on the side, of course. I'm gonna take a bite. Yeah, this is very, oh. <laughs> okay, that says all there is to know. This end is very much done, and this end is less done than the thicker part. A little bit of sauce helps a little bit, but it's not enough to make this a spectacular rib, obviously. So what's my take on these Swift pre-seasoned bake in the bag? Spare ribs, uh, not great when baked in the bag. Um, they cooked unevenly. The rub was nothing spectacular. Um, the meat is gray. There's, of course, no smoke flavor, and um, I think you get a much better result, even if you bought this product, if you thawed it out and then you went ahead and grilled them on your grill, or you put them in your smoker, got some smoke flavor on them, basted them with a little barbecue sauce at the end, I think they'd be a lot better. Um, maybe putting these ribs on the grill at this point with some sauce might help a little bit, but you know, part of the meat is appears to be overcooked anyway, so, I think you have to be very careful in doing that. You probably would just dry them out. I should point out they also have another flavor. They have one that's a Memphis rubbed spare rib. So you've got two choices. I thought Kansas City style would be more representative and that's what I did here today. But bottom line, I, I won't be buying them again. I'll be buying fresh spare ribs and applying my own rub, doing them in my Smoky Mountain cooker. So as I said before, look, this is not meant to be a replacement for the ribs that we normally do in the Smoky Mountain Cooker. Just want to do this for fun. It's one of these interesting barbecue products that you spot in the grocery store and that I wanted to share with you so that you would be informed about them if you saw them and you can make your own decision about whether you want to try them or not. I hope you found this video, if not useful, at least somewhat entertaining. I took another hit for the team here, you know, by doing these ribs. If you'd like to see more of my videos in the future, Please click the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you will get notified when I got new stuff coming out of YouTube. And until next time, take care everybody. I appreciate you very much. Bye bye.